Thank you all very much. Thank you all for coming. We have what looks like a big agenda, guys. I emailed them to you, but there's copies laying there for this morning. Uh, and we're going to move right along to uh, everybody's here. We, we have two sets of minutes to look at. One from the April 17th regular session meeting and one from the special meeting that took place on April 26th. Water section. If you want to change Gary's name to Gary instead of Gay. Oh, in the minutes. <laughs> in the minutes. In the under wastewater. Oh yeah, right here. <laughs> Commissioner Gay Johnson. Could okay. be worse. Could be worse. Is that in the special? No. Okay. Easy. Done. I'm going to make a motion to approve these minutes. And do we have a second? Um, I'll second it. Uh, what did we decide about the stones at the cemetery though? Did seriously? Did nothing they? yet. Yeah, nothing yet. We're looking for the people, the owners, the, owners, the people who put the stones. Mm -hmm. And what did you do? Put something on the paper, did you say? Yeah. No, Facebook. Just put the Facebook. And, uh, and I think there, we, we did see some family members. Gene Cook, that lives out on Sulphur Road. His parents are one of them. All right. Well, that's an easy one. Good. That's an All right, and then we have these uh, minutes from the special meeting. The review. Sir? We have a motion on the floor in okay. a second. Uh, let's get that vote. Okay. All those in favor? Okay. All right, now, Harold. On this uh, last month, we had a raise in the, uh, the rates on the commissioners and the mayor. Yes. I, had, I talked to the uh, newspaper, but I had it in there alone. So, they had us, the commissioner uh, up to uh, 352, and I learned about it. So, right. You know, the story was uh, was reported that they went from uh, the commissioners went from 300 to 350, and yeah. it was 250 to 300, and the mayor from 250 yeah. to 350. Right. Thank you for taking care of that. All right. You're welcome. All right. Uh, moving right along, uh, I apologize that we don't have our financial reports to give uh, our uh, accountant girl has taken a job with the school as the comptroller and uh, she has been overwhelmed but she will be in here uh, sometime uh, this week to get those done. Yeah. To get so them. will we do them the next meeting then? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. And I'll email them out too. All right so we will move right along to uh, commissioner reports with Tammy. Um, well if everybody's seen the paper they put up the veterans stones and moved the flagpole over by the building. Looks really good. Um, I was happy with it and Dave is keeping up on the mowing. Everything looks really good. And we have a sign out there that needs some repair. 
some new lettering. You know, it, it's the one that tells, you know, when you can put flowers, how long they can stay, blah, blah. So if we can, if I could make a motion to get this sign repaired. Or replaced. Or replaced. As long as it doesn't say welcome to. Yeah. And uh, what do you all, do you have a, you guys agree? agree. What kind of lettering? Just going to do one of them Just right. Huh? Just going to do one of them. Yeah, the other one isn't like this. Yeah, yeah, the other one you can read. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me turn it out. Okay. I'll make a motion here. Oh, she's got a motion. You second it. Okay. All right. Any Thank discussion? All, right. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you. All right. And uh, and on what uh, Tammy is saying, uh, the Trimble County Historical Society and. Uh, some others got together to put this memorial up, and they really ought to be commended, guys. This, this is a beautiful thing. Uh, Chris Leiter come up and, and moved the flagpole. We weren't sure how deep it was, uh, but it looked like an easy, easy uh, fix. And he says sometimes that just happens, so we got lucky. And uh, it's right by, by the where the building is and the road that's going towards the library. It's right in that area, in the new yeah, section. It looks awesome. And we talked about uh, maybe putting a solar cap on top. Yeah. They're like 22 bucks for yeah. a, yeah, what a little think? cap that goes on the top and it's solar so it'll light the flag during the day, or at night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you all okay with that purchase? I'll make a motion to buy one. I mean, I say, we don't get one that's only twenty-two dollars. We get a, one that's going to last. Well, let's find out how good this twenty-two dollar one is. Spend twenty-two now. <laughs> buy nice or buy twice. Well, if we spend forty-four, we can spend twenty-two twice. If the twenty-two one's good, we may not have to spend the other have twenty-two. To. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I live my life that way. I tear things up, so I'd rather buy three cheap ones as one good one because I'll tear it up too. And see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. So we have that motion. Yeah. <laughs> and we have Put a second. A new yeah. Uh, yeah. Newt seconds. Any discussion at all about it? Regular price is thirty seven dollars on Amazon. I'm probably should have told you that. Alright, so all those in favor of buying a solar light cap for the flagpole cemetery. Alright, thank you all. All right. Anything else, Tammy, for the cemetery? Mm, I don't think so. All right. And John, what do you have on us? The streets situation. Uh, the street by the cemetery. Well, not the cemetery. The funeral home has a few potholes in it. It uh, yes. Looks like it's right by it's where uh, it filled cracks in it, and uh, it looks like we could probably just do a little session of payment pavement through there. I mean, depending on which one would be cheaper, but I feel like that could be a possibility or just fill the holes and then fill the cracks again. That's what I used to do out there seven years ago. So. Who does that? Just, you just put it out for bed oh. to fill cracks. Yeah, I went out there myself, mm -hmm. filled them up. So. Yeah. And OVA did for us one year. Yeah. Uh, all right. And then uh, some other spots like on Smith Drive. I mean, that's a big road, so of course there's going to be cracks. It's traveled a lot. We're trouble right now. We're short of money on that. Yes. On that road. Plan. Yes, we are. And that's, that's what hurts. That's not going to get any better. No. Unless we increase our population. Because the next time they count is 2020. Yeah. And uh, that municipal road aid money does come from, it's based on our population. So hopefully we'll get some, uh, get a good count and increase our population a little bit. All right. Anything else, John? That's about it. All right. And on the waste border with Mr. Johnson. Jim pulled Walmart bags out of the aerators, and he had he had some other stuff in the aerators this Sunday. Two Sundays in a row, the aerators were, were down. 
That sound about right, Jim. Since Newt yeah, can't we, talk. Yeah, we've had several calls in the last month. In the last month? Not just on Sundays? No. Yeah. And it's aerators that are down on it? Uh, it's been pumps and yeah. quite a few things. Have we got that other pump changed yet? No. But uh, it's not. That's kind of been on me starting a new job and working Monday through Friday. I haven't been able to get to the gym and get down there and get it fixed. But next month or two, that'll change. And I've said before long, we can get it for you. That'll work. Well, and you got it. And what about the new list station? We talking about the one at Good News Homes? List station three. We have nothing on that. Yeah. Nothing on that. Uh, it's been turned over to engineering. Yeah, yeah, we have nothing on that. I wish we did have something on that. Anything else new? Yeah. All right. All right. Commissioner Green. Anything on the sanitation? I assume everything's running good, but I haven't heard of complaints. And uh, I noticed this morning he came early. And I oh, think yeah. Because of the heat. I yeah. think it's because of the heat. So I heard, you know, thanks. Ask Peter to go well. Put it out. Not the early. Not nice. They're having trouble. Yeah, it was Frank, like 5.30. Yeah. I guess yeah. you're sure. Yeah. yeah. He came real early this morning. Boy, I ain't got out. <laughs> right. Good. Good How's that moving? How's that moving? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, in the old business, I talked earlier about the historical society putting up our veterans memorial. Uh, it, it's awesome. It really is. And uh, Jennifer, you want to tell us about your clerk's training you went to? Uh, yeah, we learned about property taxes. We learned about dealing with millennials and harassment. And we learned about the Veterans Association. Very interesting. Anything on in taxes and just property taxes. Yeah. Yes, and alcohol taxes. <laughs> yeah, I got that. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, we're going to skip uh, code enforcement proceedings and come back to that. And Jennifer, you want to tell us about the results of our re reverse salt auction? Yes. We've got in several bids. First one we received was for the Hawkins. You can have that on this one. Was for 150. We received another one for 99 dollars. And this is delivered per ton. Yeah. And then for Compass was 97 dollars. It's per ton. Yeah, you just said that, sorry. So I assume we go with the cheapest one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can I add something here? Yes. What is it? How is that in comparison to what we get here? What was it last year? Well, we, we I think we spent uh, like, probably about five or yeah. six thousand dollars yeah, in bags. Yeah, in bags that's a fifth of what you pay for it. Yeah. Only thing that I will ask you. You said you had two that was almost the same? Yes. The 97 and 99. Here's this the 97. Okay. That's delivered yeah, price. it was 99. All right. I'm sure it's probably the same salt. Right. But in it order, explains what kind of salt it is, too. In order to make the deal work that we have, right. we need to be very compatible, if not the same, because okay. once we put it in there, it's with their salt as right. well. Do you know what they have? Uh, no. That's, I didn't that's realize we were going to have different kinds here. Yeah. They're on there. Uh, See what they have. I think they're well, on Well, I there. can't do that now. Right. So, but. what I'm asking, if you're going to do it now, which you probably have to, can you leave it open to go either one of those? Yes. Let's find out. And so, I, let me get with them to find out because we don't want to put a different no. animal in with their animal. Right. Because they're going to frown on me on that if that happens. Well, yeah, we don't want to break that deal. This is a lot cheaper, but I hate to do it. You know, we some business in the city. I agree. Uh, but, you know, we with got our got municipal got road, eight money going up, down. Even a little more, we got same of businesses here. It's I, a couple I, I thousand agree. more. It's not like pennies more. It's a couple yeah, well, thousand more. Yeah, well, I know. Where. Where and then we have well, I mean, load the bags. And like the money that we save on this, we can use to fix our roads. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's right. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah, that's right. But I like to take care of them. Oh. Yeah, and I, and I like to too, uh, but it's not not always uh, affordable, especially with our municipal road aid money going down. Yeah, I know it's a lot of good ones. Yeah, low ones. But. All right, uh, I have a proposed budget for you all uh, in your packets here. This, uh, and I'll hand this over to Joanne. Are you found here? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. This is Wait a minute. We got a motion. Uh, could I have a motion to have the first reading of the 2018-2019 budget? I'll make a motion to have a first reading. And we have a second. second. I okay. need to do details. Yes. City of Bedford, Ordinance Number 5, Series 2018. An ordinance establishing the annual budget for the City of Bedford, Kentucky. The City of Bedford annual budget for fiscal year July 1, 2018 through June 30, 2019 by estimating funds for operations of city government, whereas pursuant to law and in the interest of sound fiscal planning, the City of Bedford, Kentucky is authorized to adopt an annual budget and now therefore be it ordained by the City Commission, City of Bedford as follows. Section 1, the annual budget for the fiscal, fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2018 and ending June 20th, 2019 is hereby adopted as follows. The general fund income um, available taxes Admiral. okay at home $2,500 garbage collection 27,000 property tax 32,500 municipal insurance tax 170,000 franchise payments 25,000 community center $3,500 expenses payroll 70,000 payroll taxes 22,000 Health insurance, $3,600. Attorney, $10,000. Utilities, $30,000. Advertising, $3,000. City insurance, $15,000. Garbage, $27,000. Office expense, $8,500. Fire subscription, $15,000. Audit expense, $6,500. Reserve, $6,400. Community center, $3,500. House Bill 119, $6,000. Retirement, $5,500. ABC, $9,500. Training, $19,000. Totals for general account, $260,500. Income, $260,500. Expenses, uh, uh, O&M, Sewer account income, sewer payments two hundred and fifty six thousand dollars, sewer deposits four thousand, reconnect fees two thousand five hundred dollars, new hookups five hundred and fifty, meter reading fee seven thousand two hundred dollars for a total of two hundred and seventy thousand dollars, two hundred and fifty dollars. Expenses, contracted services thirty thousand dollars, repairs and maintenance forty thousand, sales tax two thousand eight hundred dollars, postal expense. 32,000, bond and sinking, 25,000, utilities, 25,000, audit expense, $5,600, reserve, 12,150, operating expense, 5,000, employee taxes, 20,000, retirement, 12,500, payroll, $55,000, meter readings, $5,200 for a total of $270,250. Miscellaneous accounts, income for the municipal road aid is 21,000, expenses 21,000. Bonded sinking, income 18,000, expenses 18. Depreciation and reserve, income 39, expenses $3,900, expenses $3,900. Discretionary fund, income $1,000, expenses 1,000. Cemetery fund, income $35,500, expenses $35,500, total of miscellaneous accounts, se uh, income $79,400, expenses $79,400. Total budget for all city accounts, income $610,000 and $150,000, expenses $610,000 and $150,000. Savings, Bedford uh, Loan and Deposit, Certificate of Deposit, um, 34382 
um, depreciating reserve seventy-seven thousand two hundred eleven and twenty-four cents. Certificate of deposit thirty-four three fifty-five general fifty-six thousand three hundred sixty-eight and uh, seven cents. Certificate of deposit three four three eight three cemetery seventeen thousand eight hundred eleven and nineteen cents. Savings account cemetery. $12,193.47 for a total of $163,583.97. Right along. Uh, the concrete pad at the cemetery for the dumpster. Uh, how do you all want to uh, work that? Jim and I went out there and measured it. Uh, and I haven't bid it out yet because I was thinking about the uh, memorial coming. Do we still want to do it and maybe put a wall, a uh, fence to hide the dumpster? Do we still want to put it beside the building? Or do we want to leave it where it's at? Right now it's up here. And it's by the gazebo. But if we move it over here, then it's going to be by our nice little memorial. We can put up, I don't know, that's chicken scratches, kids, put the dog on it. Can y'all see that? It's currently sitting up here. Here's the gazebo, here's our cemetery building. The idea was to move it away from the gazebo, but we got our nice little memorial here. If we pour that concrete pad here, maybe we could put up a little fence to kind of hide it. We're almost at a catch-22. Yeah. Or leave it where it's at. Well, I guess we'll just leave it where it's at then, because if that's acceptable to everybody else, because it does look nice over by the memorial, and it's been there for Three years, years, so yeah. might as well just leave it. Yeah. Sure, 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 sure. yeah. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. All right. Uh, I make a motion. We leave it. Yeah. Leave it as, as uh, leave it land, and we have a second by new count and any discussion whatsoever. All right. All those in favor? Thank you all. Uh, insulating the gym. Uh, we don't have air conditioning in the gym, and we do have our heaters fixed, but uh, it is not insulated. And I did talk to a, a contractor, uh, well, the guy who was fixing our heating and air, and he explained how much heat we're losing going through that ceiling, and that he can. Uh, he said that we could probably insulate this that would probably knock our heat way down in the winter and it would help keep it cooler in the summer. And in the summertime, it's unbearable uh, to be in that gym. It's just a hot box. Would you all like to put out for bid uh, to get somebody to insulate just the roof of the gym, just the ceiling, to start? I mean, because I, I, I'd say it's gonna be uh, a lot of money. I don't want to put a number on it. It's going to be a good expense on that. I, I believe it would be. Yeah, yeah I believe it would be. It's going to be an expense. Yeah, but I, I think it's. I think we need to get her done. But I want to know what you all think. Well, I guess we, if we could get free estimates. Yeah. Yeah. See how well, much it's going to be. Yeah. Everybody agree on that? Yeah. Oh, we have a motion from New Johnson to get some estimates. Mm -hmm. Very good. And we have a second from John. And any discussion? All is in favor. I'm going to want like, to wait. You want to see what the numbers look like? Yeah. That's what I like. To do. Yeah. Yeah, because we can reject all bids. No. Just because we get sealed bids, we don't we don't have to accept them. But I think it'll give us an idea of the of the cost. All right. Uh, moving right along to KMCA training in July for Jennifer. That is her mandatory training. Uh, for our clerk certification. Jennifer, you want to tell us a little bit about that? It was in uh, Covey, uh, Lexington. It is to get the certification for the clerk. I have the, they haven't given us an agenda and everything yet. Um, the person went out in June. 
and it is coming up. Yes. And it's from the 15th to the 20th. And at the other training uh, that was held, uh, Leanne helped out in the office, did an excellent job, uh, mostly just phone calls. That's, uh, that was about it. A couple people come in paying sewer bills, but it really wasn't busy. And uh, so I would probably, uh, yeah, I would want her back in here again during her, while she's off. And if you all look around the building, you'll see uh, she's been cleaning very good. She comes in and is no nonsense, right to business, and uh, and she's gone. It looks looks really good. All right, um, city official training. There is a conference coming up in Lexington that is about blighted, abandoned, dilapidated properties. Uh, Jordan, I don't know if you could get off work to go to that. Not right now. I'm not going to be able to. I'd like to go, but I'm not going to be able to. Okay. That, that is a very good conference. And Joanne, I don't know if you want to go to that. Maybe. Okay. I'd like at least one person to go. Maybe bring some material back from it. Right. Even if it's... And it, it'll know. help to hear since, right. since the original conference they had about that and they rolled that out, it would be nice to hear from other cities who deal with the same stuff we do. Yes, that's yeah. it. Yeah, that's exactly it. The bad conference is what yeah. they call it. Very, very good. Okay. What are the dates on that? The 28th and 29th June. of June in Lexington. Yeah. I'd like to go. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Just let me know whoever wants to go. Okay. Yeah. We'll get that, get that okay. set up. So, right, right now for me is no. If something changes by the end of June. Right. I'll, I'll, I'd like to go. look at it. And, uh, okay, moving right along to uh, our ordinance on mobile phones. Uh, I left it on my desk. Okay. Uh, I do have a copy of that. Is okay. It with the, is this where you're talking about the... Um, yes, kind of. Engine? Yep, kind of. You well, and I've got some phone? good news. There was, a, there was a lady called. She was wanting to, wanting to know about putting a... 35 foot by 8 foot mobile home on a piece of property in town. Uh, in our ordinance from 1998, it, it defines a mobile home as having a chassis and underpinning and all these things. Uh, it defines a recreational vehicle, an RV, as something that is as a motor or is pulled by something else. So uh, the lady uh, has since called and, and explained to Jennifer that it does have a motor, so it is a an RV. And at this present time, we do not allow people to set up RVs for more than two weeks in town. Do we want to change that? No. Absolutely no. I don't think so. Okay, then that's then that's a dead issue. Uh, but I I did say I would bring it up, and I agree with you all. Uh, all right, uh, the next thing, uh, if I could uh, give Charles Reed the floor. Charles is with Feed the Children. You all see this uh, little brochure here where uh, Charles is planning a family fun day. Charles, uh, just to say a little bit about him, he is a Vietnam veteran who lives here in Trimble County, lives in Milton. And uh, out of the goodness of his heart and a calling from God, he decided to start this program of Feed the Children. And he has, he's went all over the county putting up these little bins, he and his wife, uh, with food in them for kids for after school snacks. And uh, it has been a blessing to a lot of kids we see in here, but I know he's got places all over the county. So Charles, uh, without any further ado. Yeah, it's hard to believe it's been three years since the Lord laid this on my heart. And we're, they, the pastor of Mount Carmel Church called my wife, and she said one of our flyers up, how can they help? And so they, the use of their place, the Daisy Daisy Farm, and they're going to have on June 30th, and uh, have a cookout. And we're going, I'm going around 
asking for donations either in food or something that can be auctioned off and the money will come to feed the children. They're not making they're not making anything off of it. The lazy daisy box, they're just hosting it first. And if they have to buy the food, that will have to come out before uh, the feed the children gets anything. But I'm gonna go around and see if I can get donations from different places to get the food or donated item to be auctioned off to offset that and then like I said all the proceeds will come to feed the children and I want to thank you all for seeing me the first time when I come in here green as a gold didn't know nothing still don't know much but uh, didn't know which way to go how I was doing it but the Lord has really blessed he's used different people see that the job gets done and I hope I never have to answer the phone from somebody that says, can you bring some food? We need some. And I'll have to tell them no. I hope I never have to do that. Because there's, it just, when I see a little kid come out of one of these places we have, uh, totes in, either with a snack or a meal, what if that food hadn't been even if they're facial. So that's that's what I'm about and I I want again I want to thank you all for seeing me and putting that with me the last three years. I hope it's the next hundred years. That's right. right. Be that's good. Right. And uh, with that guys I would like to uh, I would like to donate two hundred dollars to this Feed the Children program. Uh, what do you all think? We have a motion from Mr. Johnson. We have a second from John. Yep. All right. Any discussion at all? All those in favor? Aye. Thank you, guys. How about that, Charles? We'll, we'll cut you a check. Okay. Yeah, that'll help a little bit. Yes, yes. Thank you. Super. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. Good deal. All right. Uh, now I would like to uh, let uh, Miss Crawford have the floor to talk about the mentoring program at, that is coming up at the schools. We have something really neat that's happened. There's been a, a grant that came to the county, and in that grant, we have uh, what's called Mentoring Youth Strong, and it's through the uh, Trimble County Community Action Agency and through the school system. We have our office in the board office, so if somebody wants to come and see us, they can always meet us at the board office. This is one hour a week in school during school hours and you'll be paired up with one to four children depends on what you want um, also you have the option of either doing it yourself or pairing up with somebody but our biggest important thing we want to make sure people understand is when you commit to that one hour you commit to that one hour a week now it can be monday this week it can be tuesday next week we're really suggesting that you not take them out of class every Monday at 9 o'clock. That's the same class. They may miss something. Um, a lot of the kids are going to be facing issues as it is. We don't want to add one to it. We want to make sure that they excel, not hinder them in any way. So we're suggesting that you um, try to do it one day. If it, if it has to be Monday every week, that's fine. Maybe Monday morning this week, Monday afternoon next week. But try to keep it to where you're not taking them out of the same exact class every time. Um, the grant is renewable, so we're excited about that. We'll, all, we'll be looking for donations and fundraisers and to make sure that the program can keep going. As of today, we're really excited. We have enough mentors to service 80 children in Trimble County. Now that's not enough mentors and that's not enough kids. We want to try to service every kid that is looking at an issue. and. Me personally, I'd like to see every kid in school have a mentor. I think it would be great even if you have two good parents. There are questions kids have that they will not ask their parents. There are issues they're facing they don't know how to bring it up to their parents. And a lot of times they'll do that with someone else, especially if they know it's confidential. So I personally would like to is see Is there it. material or is it just a, you know, set with them and talk? 
whatever you want. We have games you can play with them. If you can't think of a game, we've got a packet we'll give you that will give you some ideas of what to do. You can talk with them about their day, you can talk about the issues that they're facing. If they're having trouble in math and you're comfortable with that class and what they're actually studying then, you can help them with that math. We're not telling you that you have to do any one specific thing. You're there to mentor. It's like grandparenting. Whatever issue you see that they may need help with and you're comfortable helping them with that, well then by all means, give them a helping hand. So we're looking for anybody that would like to mentor in the county. And uh, if you have, if you'd like to do it or if you know someone that would like to do it, pass it on. If you know of a student that you think would benefit, pass their name on to us. We'll make sure we, we try to get them a mentor. So in all the schools? This is in high school and middle school. Then in the grade schools, there's another program for them. Oh. So this one, this one here is Mentoring Youth Strong. And like I said, there's one for the grade schools. That's a different program, so yeah. Because we're trying to make sure all the kids have something. So, any other questions? Very good, it's very exciting stuff. Anybody like a packet? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I would, but mm -hmm. I'll have to think about time. You think about it. It's once a week for one hour, and it's in school. So you're not taking them somewhere, you know. If you want to pair up with somebody and mentor, and then you can't be here this week, but they can, well then the child has that hour. So as long as we make sure that child has that hour, and we're not, you know, if you're stuck on the interstate between Louisville and here, then you call me or Mark Johnson, and one of us will try to get there and take care of the students for you. But, you know, they like, kids like consistency. They like that familiarity and they get comfortable, so. As much as we can, we'd like to keep the same mentor or mentors in that group. But uh, there's always issues, health issues, you have to have surgery or you get stuck on the interstate or, you know, there'll be things that'll come up it from time to time. So. And it's just during school, during the summer months. It's not that, um, you can still call them if you'd like. You know, I mean, we're not telling you you can't, but we're just, if you commit to that hour, it's during school, so. Very good. Is that it? Yeah, thank okay. you. Thank you very much, Debbie. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you. All right. Uh, and now we have some code enforcement uh, discussions to take place. And uh, I believe we should go into executive session to discuss this. So I will need a motion to go into, the, go into executive session to discuss uh, potential litigation and uh, it's a private matter. Do we have a motion? I'm going to make that motion. Right. Do I have a second? No, oh, sir. Um, can I bring something up about code enforcement first? Yes. Well, now that it's spring, the grass is going nuts. People are going crazy. Maybe we can think about it over this next month and we may think about hiring somebody to go out and cut this grass and sending out bills if we can't get it done. I have a stack of citations on my kitchen table where it's going in right now. But the people, you can tell who has cut grass in the past seven, ten days and who hasn't touched the grass at all. This year. The ones yeah. that have not touched the grass at all, I have citations ready to go. Okay. Plus a couple other properties here in town that have citations. So those are getting ready to go out, but I, I do agree we do have some uh, abandoned properties here in town uh, that are not being maintained by the property owners. Uh, so I, I would I would agree with that idea to get somebody to, to do that. Okay, maybe we can put that on the agenda for next month and think about you know maybe get some names of people that are in that business. Absolutely to contact. All those in favor going into executive session. All right. Sorry to kick you all out. Thank you, though. Okay. Uh, let's make a motion to come out of executive session. All right, we have a motion to come out of executive I'll session. Second, we have a second by John. All those in favor, aye. All right, in executive session, uh, we decided we were going to proceed with sending out uh, code <coughs> enforcement violations uh, over people uh, not mowing their grass or taking care of their property in different ways. 
and uh, and we also discussed uh, uh, compensating our code enforcement officer. And uh, we want to make a motion for every citation that Jordan sends, he will get twenty dollars. Okay, we have a second on that. Second. All right. And all those in favor. All right. Thank you. All right. Does anybody have anything else? Joanne. Damn it. No. Eric. No. Debbie. No, thank you. John. I do. I'd like to go ahead and make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Wait for, wait for You're you. always the first. Or Newt, are you with that? So Newt seconds. All in favor. Did you have anything else? All those in favor. Thank you.